I just finished doing some interviews for a new video editor position that we're bringing on for our team. And holy crap was some of the videos that I was watching absolutely awful. And it's not the video editor's fault, not all the time. Sometimes it's your fault. So I wanna go through the five deadly sins that you need to stop doing in your micro content videos and probably your regular videos as well. Let's get into it. Deadly sin number one, uneven volume levels. Now your audio is going to be more important than your video as a video specialist person. It does hurt my feelings a little bit to say that video takes a second seat to the audio because if the audio sucks, it's hurting people's ears, it's annoying and frustrating, then they aren't going to want to stick around as much that if it was too dark or maybe you're overexposed. People don't really care about this stuff. They may notice, but they don't leave the video if they're having those kinds of issues. What I mean by uneven volume levels, it's not like when you go outside, it's at one level. Then you come back indoors, it's at another level. That matters, but not as much as when an audio effect comes in and it's like a swoosh or transition or whip or whatever the heck is going on but the bell noises and a bunch of other stuff and it's just super loud or at a hundred percent and it's not being adjusted now if you're hiring for a video editor position then this shows me that this is a video editor that's not that refined in their editing because they're not noticing that it's uneven audio levels maybe they're you know editing with speakers and that's fine if you know what you're doing it's not fine if you don't know what you're doing meaning you're not listening for the highs and the lows and maybe you haven't audibly adjusted your system to be fully for editing that in that way you're just maybe using your laptop speakers or whatever speakers you're actually using so you may truly miss it but a refined video editor knows that even if you're listening on your speakers that final edit before it gets rendered out should be listened with headphones i personally recommend and prefer to use headphones it's just the safer bet so deadly sin number one uneven volume levels deadly sin number two one-sided audio levels which means you can only hear it like again with headphones it's only coming in the right side and again this is a sign of an unrefined video editor meaning they have not taken the time to kind of hone their skills just because you can add effects in add transitions and technically have the like checkbox of things doesn't mean that you're doing it in a way that's telling a good story or that you're doing it in a way that's actually moving the audience or moving the viewer to actually feel something or literally not notice. And that's usually a sign of a good and refined video editor is that when transitions or effects and things are happening on the screen, it's keeping your attention, but you're not noticing when the music transitions, you're not noticing when you really make transitions from one to the other. Now we're doing it in this video because it just kind of makes sense for the pacing, but sometimes it's not and you're just progressively moving the video along. The viewer feels it and a short video feels like sometimes a longer video based on pacing. They may be listening on speakers and so they're not really picking that up but the sign of a good refined video editor knows to check the audio before you export and at least listen with headphones at some point deadly sin number three not getting to the point at the beginning of your videos now i say that your videos need a solid hook in the beginning and if you notice we didn't actually go into like the typical hook where i'm saying your loved one has recently done xyz or whatever the case but having an actual hook that the viewer cares about that keeps their interest then you know it's one thing however but this video just kind of took a little bit of a different approach and there's no right or wrong it's just making sure that whatever it is that you actually are saying is maybe giving a little bit of a context because they've already searched for the video they've already seen thumbnails and several thumbnails plus your thumbnail they've already read the title and they see a little bit of description already on the YouTube search so they don't need you to go into a 45 minute monologue of why they wanted to watch the video that they already clicked on that's backwards really start to put yourself into the shoes of the viewer and understand from the perspective of the person that's on the keyboard don't get into this whole three minute monologue and then you start talking about well let's get into the video it's like five minutes later what are you talking about <laughs> so get to the point right away and i'm saying like 8 15 30 seconds or less for sure start getting to the point of why they actually clicked on the video instead of just dragging it on and out and it just gets to be annoying as a viewer and pro tip here a good refined video editor knows to cut out some of those different parts and they know what is going to keep the meat of the content 
and what is going to actually help move the story along without leaving everything in just because the client, whoever the person is that you're working with, or maybe it's you yourself and you're becoming a better video editor, becoming a better and refined video editor, you know, when have I got to the point? When do I need to shut up and stop talking? And when do I actually need to move on to the next thing? There's actually times when I was just recording videos in the beginning and I would be watching them back during the editing process, trying to find out when do I get to the point? And then I would notice like I'm tired of watching this and I'm not even done editing it that let me know I really needed to improve how I recorded my content if you want a few pro tips check out the I card up there in the link in the description I'm actually going to share uh, some of my video recording and editing tips deadly sin number four is leaving in all the weird spots and again this is a sign of a refined editor when they are cutting out those weird pauses or segments in between statements this is especially important when you're looking at micro content it's like you're leaving a bunch of dead space at the beginning or somewhere in the middle that messes up the pacing of the video and helping to move the story along if it's like these weird parts these are those they really seem really small and in time wise they probably are however if there's at any point where you're starting to lose the attention of your audience they're dropping off progressively so we just want to remove as many barriers as possible and again if you're recording your own videos and you have those natural bits in there especially like for micro content it is the editor's job to move that stuff out of the way so that the main content can shine the main point of why someone maybe was caught and hooked at the beginning and they're now watching the content looking for that payoff but the payoff is kind of just further extending out further and further and it gets annoying and so it's as easy as doing this on their phone to move on to the next piece of content don't make that mistake and don't let your editors make that mistake as well and again that's a sign of an unrefined editor when they don't know what to take out and what to leave in now this one's going to step on some people's toes but i am okay with that Number five, giving your video editors crappy files to work with, expecting them to work magic. It does not work that way. You must produce quality in order for them to export quality. If you give them crap, sometimes they can shave some of the hard edges off of it, but a lot of times they can't. Even the best video editors still, it's like when a file is simply unusable, it's just unusable. And there really is a point when you need to know, when do I really just say this video actually was not recorded well? I don't know what happened. <laughs> but this is not going to work. I've had some days where I'm like in a lot of pain or I'm taking medication. And so like, I'm kind of like fog brained, if you will. And it's just like, I'm not in it. And some days you can have that if nothing's wrong with you. And I'm like, I tell my editor, like, Hey man, it's just, I apologize. It's rough. It took me a long time to get through each individual point. And I'll say, I don't know what happened, but aggressively cut as best as you can because it's in there but it's just a lot of mistakes around it sometimes it's like that and other days it's not where it just kind of moves along what I mean by not giving your editor crap is not like worrying about mistakes that's going to happen you're going to have retakes even I have times where I'm sitting there and I'm thinking literally in this video recording and I'm like okay you know what I want to say I know how I want to start it I even have notes on exactly what I want to hit on and I'm like just Come on brain, kick it out and it's not happening. So those moments happen. However, it's really understanding when you give them really bad audio and it's like this audio is completely unusable or something really happened with the video file and it's like it needs to be a time when you say this actually needs to be re-recorded when it can be sometimes that happens at events or whatever but just set a contingency plan in place of what are the things i need to check off of a list to make sure if i'm at an event i know i'm going to be talking to a lot of people i know that i'm going to be moving around maybe vlogging or whatever what do i need to do to make sure that it's actually where it needs to i would say make sure you put like a checklist aside already for those kind of things but we'll talk about that in another video at a later day but these are the five deadly sins that you want to make sure you watch for and if you want to see some of the editing hacks that I think you need to change whether you're using like a Sony zv 10 or similar Sony camera and you can even probably find these settings on other cameras check out the video coming up on the screen because it will serve you well.